While I usually like to keep all of my Cave Story videos positive, I think it's time that we all took a deep collective sigh and look at all the cool Cave Story things we fans were robbed of. Before I get started though, I do want to admit that most of the stuff I've covered before, but it's all scattered throughout my videos and I feel like we've had more additions in recent years to add to the list to make it more quote unquote definitive. But more cancelled cave story projects are more inevitable than death or taxes, so who knows how future proof this video will be. Let's begin. The first stuff I'm going to cover is the merchandise, but I'm only going to gloss over this stuff since this has all had an entire dedicated video made beforehand. If you'd like to see a much deeper dive into every piece of Cave Story merchandise, including con exclusive, limited time prints, and much much more, please check out the History of Cave Story merchandise video. To start us off, we of course have the Cave Story figurine sets, both in a classic figurine style as well as a more Funko Pop kind of style as well. Neither of these figurines made any kind of official release, with the official reasoning for the classic figurine style being that the figures were not cute enough. It really is some pretty strange reasoning since it feels like these figurines were meant to be more cool rather than cute, but it doesn't change the outcome nonetheless, they were never released. I'd also like to point out a mistake I made in my original merchandise video on this Balrog figurine. In my video, I claim that this Balrog figurine was a remodeled version of the classic figurine, but as it turns out, this wasn't a figurine at all. This was actually going to be a stress relief plush to squeeze on, which makes the pain on Balrog's face that much more funnier. I wish that I was able to buy one to keep on my desk just as a novelty, but I guess that goes for everything else on this list. The next one we don't even have a picture of. Confirmed by the founder of Nicholas himself, there was going to be a plush of King's Blade, and I am so sad that we never got it. Do you know how many nightmares and sleepless toss and turns King's Spirit could have protected me from? I swear, if I had that plush, I could have been way different now. I probably could have had a consistent upload schedule. Alright, with the cancelled merch out of the way, let's get into the real stuff. Heads up, this next section I've always wanted to make an entire video on but never did, so here's your Blade Strangers beta mini segment. For starters, we were robbed of a much wider Cave Story cast in the final build. As it turns out, not only was the Doctor going to be a playable character, but so was Balrog. We of course have actual gameplay of the Doctor being playable on a stage that's based on the King's Table segment during the final boss gauntlet. It sure is a shame because this footage is awesome. I have on multiple occasions just loaded this video on my phone and watched it over and over for minutes on end. I truly think the Doctor looks amazing in Blade Strangers. Now getting to the Balrog screenshot, we get into much more interesting details. First of all, the fight is taking place on a scrapped egg corridor map that looks very basic yet I still really dig it. We also have much more simpler versions of Quote and Curly in the game. They both appear notably shorter than the final versions of the fan-made Blade Strangers design. I want to say this was to capture the aesthetic of the original freeware version of the game, but that's just me. It also looks like Curly is using an air dash, which would mean a cut mechanic as well, with the booster version 2.0. Oh yeah, the game also has three characters on screen, meaning that the game was potentially 2v2 rather than 1v1 like the final game. The next thing we have to look at is an incredibly detailed Mimica Village map for Blade Strangers that was also cut from the final game. Honestly, all this cut Cave Story specific content makes me believe that Blade Strangers started off as a Cave Story fighting game rather than the indie crossover it ended up being, and we're not done yet either. We also have this screenshot of what appears to be some sort of platforming adventure mode with Curly attempting to fight some generic enemies. Of course, these aren't your everyday generic enemies, these are actually Pooh. For those who don't know, Pooh are small enemies that were cut from the Cave Story beta that were meant to be much more common, but were later changed into Balrog. It's wild to think that Blade Strangers was going to be the game to bring some Cave Story beta elements into an official not lore non-canon crossover. The next project we have is actually what inspired me to make this video in the first place. That's right, I'm finally going to be talking about the infamous Cast Pixel remake. 
There's apparently a handful of people who don't know about this remake, but I think it's finally time I open your eyes. Sometime around 2015 to 2016, Nicholas commissioned an amazing artist known as Caspixel to make some mock-ups for a Cave Story remake. Quote was noted to have been completely animated by her, and I'm sad to say that there is a lot more to this remake, but a massive ton of it is locked behind an NDA. Caspixel has shown interest into sharing everything if anybody was able to get an okay from Nicholas, but that'll sadly never happen. Thankfully, Caspixel was able to reveal more screenshots later on that were previously okayed by Nicalis ahead of time for her to share. We specifically get to see Grasstown, which looks amazing. This screenshot alone was worth telling the story of this project. The bats, Frogo, Curly, and Quo all look amazing. Not to mention the environment as well, the attention given to the background is just nutty. Moving on, we get to see a screenshot of Quote walking in on the Hermit Gunsmith sleeping. The amazing part about this screenshot is the cut in character portrait. If every character had one of these, it'd be incredible. I would love to see Misery if Hermit Gunsmith looks this good. Next up, we have the Reservoir, which, of course, has a majestic eggfish. It's hard to mess up the eggfish, and this is a good example of that. Sadly, Kenpachi wasn't implemented yet, but if you look closely, we do get to see that two quotes are on screen, possibly revealing that the game was going to have a co-op like the Switch version ended up getting, which is always a rad option. Finally, we have this screenshot of the entry area of the sand zone. The area is quite simple in comparison to the other screenshots. It obviously lacks enemies and details the art style offers to the other areas, which makes me believe that the sand zone was all the project got to before Nicholas pulled the plug on it. I'm sure it still would have looked amazing as everything else given enough time. The real tragedy is that we'll never get to see an outer wall in this art style. The Caspixel remake really is neat and has quite a story to it, but please don't bother her about it after seeing this. All their answers are out there and it's clear that there's not much more she can legally say or share about it, so let's agree to admire and appreciate that she tried for us, yeah? Plus, we have Cave Story Encore now, that remake is just as amazing. Moving on, let's get to stuff that we were robbed of from stuff we actually ended up getting. Cave Story Plus on Steam has been in complete limbo for ages now, especially when compared to Cave Story Plus on Switch. The complete ditch from the Steam port to the Switch port has led fans to not only divide Cave Story from Classic and Plus versions, but now even Plus is divided from Steam to Switch because the differences are so vast. I'm amazed the ports still share the same title with how much more the Switch version has to it. Anyways, at one point, Nicholas planned to port the Steam version to an updated game engine and then update it on Steam when they were done with the process. We were told 2021 would be a safe time frame for the update, but here we are, Switch still being the most definitive official release of the game, and the Steam port has still been left to rot. Speaking of the Switch port, while it was never confirmed to be a part of the original plan, there were apparently some level of disappointment that the Cave Story 3D areas weren't added to the Switch port. It's a shame to hear this, because if you ask me, those levels are enough to make any version of the game definitive in my eyes, as long as they're toggleable, of course. Despite my hate for 3D, I've always wanted to see those levels again, so to know that they could have been added is enough to make me cry into my non-existent blade plush. Now, that does it for everything we know for certain that has been completely canned. Of course, I am totally welcome and would love for Nicalis to make this video obsolete. Seriously, that'd be the one time I would love to be wrong with one of my videos. Finally, before I leave, I'd like to play some personal bets. On Twitter, in a response to Alula, Nicholas claimed that they were apparently working on porting Cave Story to PS4 and 5 by 2022 as their time frame. And as of this video, that time frame is coming a little too close to not have a trailer or a tease or hell, even a screenshot. My guess is Cave Story for PS4 slash PS5 was worked on but also canceled. And as much as it pains me to do it, 
I'm finally joining the group of non-believers for Cave Story Story. I've joked, talked, discussed, speculated, and truly believed in the project since its first teaser five years ago. Now, listen, I would love to continue to believe. I truly want to. However, this project was first shown off again five years ago. There was clearly work going on before that, and who knows how long Nicholas has had it in their back pocket. Giving the project a generous eye, I would estimate it's been worked on for about six, maybe going on seven years now, and it's a little hard to believe in anymore when all we've gotten since then is a GIF of the project which shows that it still needs plenty of work. Not even a teaser trailer like Cave Story 3D got, or even more screenshots of the release. With that said, that does it for me. The next video will be much more positive, I promise. And again, I would love to immediately be proven wrong with all of this stuff. If Cave Story Story does end up being real, hell, I'll do a giveaway for three copies of the game. Deal? Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you all in my next video, and until then, Nerdio is out.